I hear the guards whispering in the treetops. They want me to build the most epic Viking diorama. <laughs> All right, to begin making this diorama, I began by building the foundation of the mountain from bits of XPS foam. Any voluminous pieces of junk will do. All of this is later covered with rocky textures from bark and snow. Here on the top I built the framework for the cave of the ugly troll that has stolen Thor's goat. I built kind of a box from an oat package. As you can see, I don't care much about the huge mess. I was in a hurry to get to the toilet, so I just threw all of this on. Good enough, it seems. After filling up the largest gaps with my scrap bits, it looked like this. Okay, after three days of procrastination, I cut up the foam into a shape that resembles a failed mountain. The plan is to next use our new favorite material, bark, to cover up the foam. As usual, I cut up the bark into nice fantasy-like stone pieces. And then I attach them with way too much glue. I began by covering what I could with the largest bits. So what's good about bark? In my experience, you get deeper and sharper textures than compared to foam, as you can see. It is also messier to work with. Is that good? I don't know. Let's see, I think our Thor will stand on this large stone. I put on a few more large bits, covered large gaps with junk bits of bark, and then let all of this dry for a good while. This looks like a horrible mess, but it'll turn out alright. Now that everything is in place, I painted with black. Keep in mind that everything except the bark will be covered with snow later. Here I have glued on some little bits as sand and rubble. I also did this inside the cave. Next I mixed a watery dark blue for getting that nice blue undertone for the stone. I kind of apply the mixture as a wash and then I remove the excess. Soon you will see that the blue turns darker when it's dry. Next I took a grey and overbrushed all of the bark bits. Here we start seeing just how good the bark looks. I continued by dry brushing using the drake tooth. Light strokes of the brush, mainly on the edges of the bark bits. After this, I'll somehow add a bunch of snow to cover the remaining areas. Let's go. I mixed the first layer of snow using lots of PVA glue and baking soda. I adjusted the amounts until I got a kind of fluffy snow paste. Okay, I started applying the snow on the diorama. Hope it works. We're now testing the filling capacity of the PVA baking soda snow. Hmm, after a while it looked like a strange ice cream cake in a hot summer day. Don't worry, it gets better. The next day I added another layer of snow. This time I covered everything. I know this is not the smartest method to do this, but these are the materials I have. Now the snow is thicker than the previous batch, so it works well to fill gaps. After getting snow everywhere I wanted, and after reapplying the paste on all previously snowed surfaces, I let it snow. 
I sprinkled baking soda onto the still moist, gluey snow. This will add good texture, at least I'm hoping it will. As expected, I just threw it on. I'll clean up afterwards. Okay, after some tapping with the fingers, I realized that a light brushing should result in the best fluffy snow texture. We'll see. I guess we have good time to paint the minis while that dries. First, I'll present the ugly giant. I just did my quickest paint job and had to fix a missing piece with bark bits on the back. I designed the Thor miniature on the Eldritch Foundry. Here I was able to fully customize my build. Choosing from many pieces of clothing, armor and weapons was great. I got almost exactly what I wanted, and could even adjust the stance of the mini in high detail. I recommend that you check out the Eldritch Foundry, there you can create the perfect mini for your game. Follow the link in the description if you're interested. Okay, I used brown to paint the jacket, boots and other things. The pants can be dark blue, as well as the non-metallic portion of the bracers. Next I painted the first with drake tooth. I painted the skin with a slightly whiter version of barbarian flesh. I think some kind of a blonde yellow should do for the hair. I tried brushing the Mjolnir with blue, followed by gunmetal. Not bad, I think it worked. I continued by doing small details with gold and lighter colors. Looks pretty good now, at least to my standards. Next I highlighted the jacket's details with a brighter brown. I added plenty of wash. I do think this miniature is good. I'm crap at painting, and still this looks halfway decent. So far it has felt really easy to paint the mini to a nice level of detail, to my standards. After the flesh tone wash dried, I highlighted most bits with lighter colors. Simple as that. The hammer was highlighted with silver. Some more wash, and then it is time to ruin the eyes. I used this bluish color to create a lightning glow in the eyes of the Thunder God. The gods are not pleased with my effort. I covered my slight mistake and then painted the pupils with white. Ah, uh, I kind of did it. That's good for a tabletop standard. I painted the base completely with white and then covered with glue and sprinkled on baking soda snow. Now it blends in. Good. After that, I removed most of the loose powder from the diorama using a large brush and gravity. Some places had turned yellow due to being very moist near the bark for a long time. I fixed that by applying some glue and baking soda. That should do. Well, this has improved from the ice cream cake. I continued by adding some white highlights on the edges of the stone. Here I also realized I'll actually get to use this as terrain in-game. There's a harsh winter area in my post-apocalyptic game. I think we need some more color on the rock. I carefully used the flesh tone wash on some darker areas of the rock. I also applied more at the mouth of the cave. Who knows what the trolls have been up to here. Some green wash should also work well. Next I did my best to cleanly cut the empty sides flat. And then I painted with black. I think I heard something outside. Must have been the wind. I found myself some nice miniature trees hanging on dead branches. Juniper tree twigs are perfect for this. Since the snow was not yet fully hardened, I could poke the trees in. I added some glue and topped it off with the baking soda. I left the right side of the diorama quite empty. Here I'll build a viking house or mini village in episode 2. The snow worked great on the trees as well. They need no paint job at all. Now Thor is here to reclaim his mountain goat. 
A pretty awkward looking goat. This was interesting to build. Definitely too messy. If you do this, I recommend filling gaps better before applying the snow. Some may be concerned about the snow yellowing. I can tell you, I've had similar snow terrain remain perfectly white for over a year already. You can also add white paint, that might improve the snow mixture. Anyway, it is nice to have you here on Bardscraft. If you're new, make sure to subscribe if you like the content. You can join our Discord server from the link below and go thank the Eldritch Foundry for sending me miniatures.